So let's say that you are a restaurant and you implement a bot where you are asking a person how many guests uh, will there be for the reservation and then depending on that number uh, you would collect all the guests names right for example so you would have to create a sort of a loop um, and store all the names in that dynamic loop right so it can be uh, three guests so you would have to collect three names or if it is I don't know, seven guests, guests, you would have to collect seven names, right? So how could you do this on Typebot? And, and in a more general sense, how uh, can you implement uh, loops in Typebot, right? We don't have a specific block for loops. So uh, what could be the logic here? A text block, how many guests, right? Just to ask the question, then we would have a number input and we save it in a variable name called um, total guests, right? So I'm also thinking about this in real time, right? So I never did that example. So sorry if it's not that smooth, um, but I'm just going to give you my thought process here, right? So let's say that um, it ans uh, he answers like three guests, right? How? Um, so I know that I will be using um, a new set variable value that is called uh, pop or shift, basically. Um, so this value is applied to a list, so a variable that is a list. And basically, pop is um, taking the first, uh, no, sorry, the, the last element of the list and um, injecting it into uh, another variable, right? So it will, um, you know, during time, it will reduce our list and uh, we can use it as a sort of a loop, right? So we could also use the shift um, uh, value uh, it's just like pop, but it will take the first uh, element. So let's use shift actually. And we know that we want to create that new um, variable. So this is the name of the variable where the shifted um, value will be injected to. Uh, so maybe guest number, right? And we shift it from... So total guests is not a list. That's unfortunate, right? So we need actually to create a list from that number. And how would you do this? Well, uh, it's not that easy on, on Tybot, unfortunately. So I'm thinking maybe I can improve that workflow. But basically, for now, what we can do um, is have, you know, another set variable. And we uh, can create a new variable called, um, you know, guests list, right? And we need to create that list from the number, right? So, um, so from the uh, total guests. We need to create that. So I am providing code now. So I just saw that we could create a list uh, like this with JavaScript and we provide the length uh, with our total guest uh, variable, right? So I hope it will work. So let's just try it out to make sure that it works. So we just need to uh, display that guest list uh, in a, a text bubble like this. Let's connect the two groups and try it out to make sure it properly works. So if I say four, uh, let's see the guest list. We can see, okay, a list with one, two, three, four. And that's exactly what we need, right? So that's perfect. We won't use that content, right, uh, in the list item. We just need a list to loop from, in a sense. So perfect, we have our guest list. Now, so now we can um, add back our set variable for you know, the guest number. We use the shift value and we shift from the guest list, right? Um, so let me just show you uh, if we shift that item, what is actually, you know, uh, the guest number, right? So, let, um, sorry, guest number, and it should be one in theory, right? So let's try it out, five. And so it didn't work. It's okay, okay. So it's guest list, sorry for that. Okay, so let's try it out with five and it should give back one, right? So it successfully sh shifted uh, the number into that new guest number variable, right? And if we, if we also display um, the guest list now, you should see that also guest list got shrinked down to only, uh, in our case, four elements. So let's try it out again with five guests one and as you can see now it's only two three four five so that's perfect we can use it to create our loop in a sense 
So let's remove that, those debugs uh, bubbles. We can now uh, iterate, so have our group that will be iterated, right? So let's say that we uh, want to get the name for, for the, you know, the guest number. Uh, what name for guest, right? So let's not jump, you know, this is a basic example, right? Uh, so we collect the name and uh, and you know uh, you would have also to because the the, the input um, answer will also be overwritten. So what we have to do is to append um, after each input we have to append that new va value into a new list, right? So uh, for this uh, we can use uh, you know guest names. We can create a new variable called guest names, and we can say okay append uh, the value and we need to you know collect that value so um, let's call it a name or maybe guest names but it's all right and we append uh, the name to the guest names list right uh, and so our list will be uh, you know incrementally uh, will be incrementally uh, you know expanded right with all the names uh, so we then need to, you know, do the loop. So let me just think a little bit about this. So we need a condition on top of that group uh, that checks uh, for the, you know, guest list, right? So guest list. So if guest list is empty, we can move on in a sense. Okay, so let me rearrange this a bit guest list will be created under uh, the collect total guest input, right? And then we have that shift value that we can place it here, basically. So we can connect that and then we have a loop here. So we connect to the top of the group uh, again, right? And if guest list is empty, then we are done and we can display actually uh, the guest names to make sure that we are we successfully, um, you know, injected all the names into a list, right? So let's do this. And I hope that makes sense. If we, if we follow that um, script, that flow, basically it does this, right? So guest list is created. We shift uh, the first item into a guest number variable. Okay, if guest list is empty. Okay, so maybe the condition should be there, right? So we don't want to shift it before the check, the check actually. So if guest list is empty, we move on exactly because we, it means that we shifted all the items from the guest list variable. So we shift get, uh, guest list into guest number. We collect a name uh, and append the name into the guest names variable. And we go back to the beginning of that group. We check, okay, now guest list, is it empty? Not yet. Okay, we shift now the new uh, item uh, from uh, you know, the list and we continue. And at some point, guest list will be empty because we are shifting uh, here uh, the value, right? So it shrinks down uh, the, the list. So let's try that simple flow. Total guest, let's say three to make it, you know, faster. <laughs> name of first guest, let's say Baptiste, my name. Second guest, John. And third guest, Jack. And as you can see, we display the guest names and we, we successfully collected all three names. So that's how, um, you know, we are doing that simple example, but also in a more, you know, general sense, that's how we are looping through an array, a list on Tybot. Uh, we are using shift, either, either shift or uh, the pop value from the set variable. So yeah, I, I know that, that that code is not, you know, the, the simplest one, right? So I'm, I will maybe in the future implement a new value that says uh, create, you know, list, create list from number or something like this. Uh, but for now, we have to do it with that custom code, right? So let me show you how it looks. Uh, so it basically says array dot from. So we want to create an array. So array is synonym of list, list, right? And from an object that has the length, length property and we give it the total guest value. So this will be replaced with the total guest we just collected. So maybe three, four or five, right? And then we have a function uh, that creates that um, list, right? So it will iterate from that uh, list and 
you know, as, as we are doing here, we are just in, incrementing uh, the value for each uh, items, right? But, uh, you know, you can just copy paste it and it should work uh, just fine. So I hope that clarifies how you can do loops in Typebot and I hope that I was uh, concise uh, enough. So yeah, thank you for watching and, uh, and catch you guys in the next one.